Uh, next up, we have Louis Terrell. Sorry, I think it's the third time I've pronounced it incorrectly. I do apologise. Uh, Louis is studying for a physics degree here at Imperial in the hopes of legitimising his plans for world optimization. Although his proposal to stop the Earth's rotation with asteroids was unsuccessful, this has not put him off from coming up with another perfect logical way to make the world a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Terrell! <laughs> Good evening. I'm Louis Terrell, as you might have heard, a physics undergraduate here at Imperial, and my talk is on why the Kessler syndrome is key to humanity's future. Before I start, I do just have to point out that the views I'll be expressing aren't representative of the university or even myself. <laughs> now, there are no shortage of proponents for manned space exploration, ranging from Stephen Hawking to President Donald Trump. But why do we go to space? Is it for the benefits to science, the tech spin-offs that benefit life back down on Earth? Perhaps it's the inspiration that space provides for the next generation, or it could just be geopolitical posturing. <laughs> Perhaps one of the best arguments for space colonization is that it would protect us from existential threats, such as asteroids or nuclear war. <laughs> I propose that space is not worth it. In fact, that space exploration is actively detrimental for the future of humanity. And I have a solution. To begin with, though, just how convincing are those reasons? To quote the late Carl Sagan, you don't need to go to Mars to cure cancer. As for inspiring the youth and showing off to rival superpowers, it seems like actually going to space isn't worth the effort. You could just fake it, and nobody would be any the wiser. <laughs> As for existential threats, if you're concerned about a rogue asteroid hitting Earth, it might seem like going to Mars is a great idea. But it's easy to forget just how hostile the rest of the solar system is. Unless that asteroid scores a direct hit on you, you're probably better off staying on Earth, which actually has a breathable, am a breathable atmosphere. <laughs> Still, these are just the reasons why space travel gets too much hype and attention. I haven't even started on the negatives. <laughs> Firstly, space travel is expensive, not just in terms of time, but also money and talent. For instance, Elon Musk could be working on the Hyperloop, a high-velocity, high-efficiency vacuum tube transport system that would finally make train spotting a cool hobby. Unfortunately, even he only has time to run maybe two world-changing projects at the same time. <laughs> if we could somehow render spaceflight impossible, that would free him up to work on more down-to-earth <laughs> ideas instead. Not only that, but even when space does become publicly available, the tickets aren't going to be cheap. The meek might inherit the Earth, but the rich will have other options. <laughs> As you might imagine, that could cause some issues. To begin with, the amount of empathy you feel towards someone decreases with their distance to you. <laughs> Others might try and tell you it's more complicated than that, but as a physicist, I can assert that empathy, like gravity and electromagnetism, follows an inverse square law. <laughs> For instance, the amount of empathy I feel towards myself is obviously infinite. <laughs> I feel about 100 times more empathy for the judges than I do for anyone sat on the back row. <laughs> and it all goes downhill from there as you get further away. <laughs> this only becomes more extreme when you go to space. Let's consider a hypothetical Martian colonist. They will feel approximately a million, 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 million times more empathy for their fellow colonists than literally everyone else. <laughs> including you and your fellow Earthlings. Needless to say, that could cause some friction in interplanetary negotiations. Additionally, at the moment, people do, at the very least, have to live on the same planet as everyone else. Right now, you might take issue with how the people in charge are running their businesses, or their countries, or, in some cases, both at the same time. <laughs> 
However, at the moment, they have to share a planet with everyone else. Imagine how much worse they could be if they knew they could escape to space before their actions catch up to them. <laughs> Fortunately, there is a solution. The Kessler syndrome describes a scenario in which objects in space collide, producing swarms of shrapnel that then go on to have more collisions themselves, like the world's most depressing game of like the world's most depressing domino run, and also in microgravity. <laughs> These clouds of debris would orbit the planet for centuries, and they'd make space travel risky, if not impossible, which is perfect for our purposes. <laughs> the trouble is, getting objects into space is hard, and it's not like existing space agencies would be willing to help us out with this, would they? <laughs> Actually, they've done most of the work for us. <laughs> Earth's currently orbited by thousands of pieces of debris, ranging from rocket stages to retired satellites. So there's not much more we really need to do. The main boosts have been from anti-satellite missile tests, which produce large amounts of fragmentation, and these are perfect for our purposes. The trouble is, these weapons are expensive. It's unlikely that any one of us here tonight <laughs> would be able to afford to buy one on the black market. <laughs> Fortunately, there are already a number of platforms dedicated to solving these kinds of financial coordination problems. Are you sick of hearing about global warming? <laughs> well, if you can get enough people together to raise funds, you can blast those pesky weather satellites out of orbit <laughs> and never have to hear about it again. Do you hate hearing your GPS tell you where to go? Well, there's a simple solution. Just blow up the entire GPS system, and everyone will be using paper maps again, just like the good old days. All you need to do is get enough nostalgics together to pool their resources. And if, you're si and if you think the telecoms are making everyone ruder, then there's a simple solution to this as well. You're not going to believe it, but this also involves blowing satellites out of the sky with missiles. <laughs> that way, everyone will be sending politely worded letters to each other, just, again, like in the good old days. So each of these, if funded by enough people with an interest in those projects, would be perfect for cutting off Earth from space forever with a swarm of shrapnel in our orbit. Now, as a closing comment, I previously mentioned existential threats to humanity. Not only would this project prevent us from ever making the mistake of leaving Earth, but there's also an existential threat it would protect us from. Should aliens ever try to invade, it would also keep them out. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>